Okay. All right, so announcements. We have the Extension Master Gardener Coordinator Conference is coming up in Tennessee. That will be next year, September 14th through 16th. Um, many details are going to be announced as they become available, but make sure you have that on your calendar. Our next monthly webinar will be November 20th at 2 p.m. We'll have Natalie Bumgardner from the University of Tennessee, and she is the Horticulture Extension Specialist, and she will update us on the Extension Master Gardener National Committee Strategic Plan. And one of the things that the National Committee is doing is looking at professional development needs of Extension Master Gardener Coordinators, and we'll talk about that a little bit in the webinar today with Charlotte. But thinking about these competencies that Charlotte's going to talk about, and then if you feel that as a Master Gardener Coordinator, there are training and professional development needs that would be helpful to you, um, send us those ideas and suggestions and we can look to secure speakers or create webinars and really focus on your professional development needs and uh, other things that we can do to help make you successful or even more successful as a Master Gardener Coordinator. So we'll start with what state you're from, and if you could take a moment to type in which state you're from in the chat box. And we've got Alabama, Oregon, Montana, Arizona, Washington, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Florida, Connecticut, we have a lot of folks on the call. Of course, North Carolina. Um, I hope I didn't miss anyone. Idaho, New Hampshire, Alabama, Illinois, Washington, Oregon, fantastic. And Tennessee and Wyoming, uh, Virginia as well. So we've got quite a few folks on the call. Very good. We're very thankful that you all are here. And um, today, uh, as we go into our presentation, it's uh, Charlotte Glenn, as I said. Charlotte has done a lot of work identifying core competencies of Extension Master Gardener Coordinators. Charlotte, I know you coordinate Master Gardener uh, Coordinators throughout the state, and this is what you've worked on, I believe, for your dissertation, correct? Yes, that's right. Just wrap okay. it up. So you're going to you're gonna talk to us about training needs today, um, and with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you so much, Charlotte, for talking with us today. All right. Thank you, Nicole. It's my pleasure. You're welcome. All right. So, um, a little bit about me, and this hopefully sounds familiar to some of you guys. I was, oops, thing is advancing on the phone. <laughs> um, I joined Extension in 2000, and I was a county extension agent um, for 18 years um, and worked in a couple of different counties. And um, it, was, it was almost my first job out of college, and I had a degree in horticulture, and I was hired by Extension, but I had never worked with volunteers unless you count inmates, which got volunteered to do some work <laughs> when I, uh, in my first job. But um, I came into Extension, and um, the county I was in had Master Gardener Volunteer Program, so I inherited this existing group of volunteers. And it really took me a long time to understand my role and my relationship with the Master Gardener volunteers and, and what I needed to be able to do um, as the, the agent and the program coordinator to make it more successful. Um, and really, it wasn't until I took a graduate course in volunteer administration that I felt more confident and, and had a system in mind, you know, of, of what my role was. Um, and I've talked to a lot of agents, particularly in North Carolina, that have had a similar experience. And then, of course, other people have, have commented on this. Um, and a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today is, is based on uh, some work that Dr. Barry Boyd who is at Texas A&M did looking at volunteer competencies. And um, in his research, he, he concluded that extension faculty often lack the competencies needed to fully manage and utilize this tremendous resource of volunteers. Um, and for us as Master Gardener Program Coordinators, this is a, a real issue because we have thousands of Master Gardener volunteers across the United States, 86,000 in the last uh, national report. They're doing millions of hours every year. They're contacting um, thousands of people, millions of people on behalf of Extension. So we really need a shortcut. We need a way for everybody who comes into this type of position, who's already in this position, to quickly get up to speed and to understand um, what they need to be able to do and build strengths in areas that maybe they aren't as strong. And 
instead of us all just kind of going around around the circle like I had to do for 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 several years when I first started before I I uh, built up my confidence in what what to do in this area. So that really kind of points what is the shortcut, you know, and, and the first step to having a shortcut is understanding what you need to be able to do. What are the competencies you need to have? And, um, you know, we're really talking about knowledge and skills as well as just abilities, attitudes and characteristics. So knowledge and skills are easier to teach somebody else. But these abilities, attitudes and characteristics are not necessarily something that can be taught, but they're definitely very important for the organization to know about in hiring. So when we're looking to hire people um, as Master Gardener Volunteer Coordinators, what kind of characteristics are we looking, uh, looking for? And then, of course, the second part, once you understand and once you've identified and delineated what you need to be able to do is to understand kind of where are you in this you know, in your uh, proficiencies in these competencies and identify those training needs um, for you individually. And then, you know, as an organization within your state or nationally, um, we can use this framework to do that. And uh, one of the resources that Nicole sent out with the email this morning was a self-assessment that you can use that is based on the competencies that um, were looked at um, in North Carolina. And you can can use it to assess where you stand and identify areas that you might want to, to strengthen and build. So there's, there are a lot of volunteer management models out there. There's a lot of, we don't have to start from scratch. Um, you've probably maybe run into some of these. The ISATUR model was really one of the first and it's been used in extension and still used and is a great model. Um, the GEMS model more recently, um, it has a few more steps built into it. Um, PEP model is another one of them. Seems like if you go to come up with a model, you've got to come up with a catchy name for it. But uh, they're, they're great models out there and they all are um, helpful for informing you on the different processes and the different tasks. Um, but these are really focused on the, the task side of things, the skills and knowledge that can be taught, that management practice, um, which is really, really critical. But the question is, is that all it takes? You know, if we could just teach people to perform certain tasks, you know, and almost give them a kit and say, here, take this kit and pass out these forms and do this and check these boxes, you'll have a great Master Gardener volunteer program. Um, probably that's not going to be the result. Um, and if you have um, talk to a lot of different Master Gardener volunteer coordinators. You know, you know, some people are better at some things than others, and it just takes a wide range of skills. Um, so that's definitely something that Dr. Boyd looked into is, you know, we have all these management focused models, but is that the whole picture? And does it align with the reality? So he conducted a Delphi study, um, which is a process where you get together a panel of experts, people that are recognized for their expertise in the area. And you ask them the same questions and you pool their answers and they all review the answers and, and then over a couple of processes they um, agree on these, this final set um, of answers. And so he had a, um, a jury of 13 experts, which include several people from Extension, Extension specialists um, that work with volunteers. Uh, and volunteer administration and other people with expertise in volunteer administration. And he asked them specifically to identify competencies needed by volunteer administrators in the year 2010. And they came up with 33 competencies and they had divided them up into five categories. So the categories um, encompassed more than just the management skills. So uh, they had organizational leadership. So eight, there was eight specific things within organizational leadership that were identified. And that really focused on planning, having planning skills, being able to do needs assessment. And a lot of it focuses on your personal commitment to your organization and its mission and being able to communicate that with your volunteers and the public. The next is systems leadership. Um, it, there were five um, competencies listed within systems leadership, but they are really critical. Systems leadership is, especially for something like Master Gardener Volunteer Program, where we are sharing ownership with our volunteers. They are, they are trained and they are really taking on the role of um, very similar to what we do. We need to be able to share the power and share the leadership and share ownership of the program with them. Um, still provide them guidance, but give them freedom. Um, and that's just a delicate balance. And that's what system leadership is really all about, that delegation, 
leadership development, collaboration, and um, sharing the program ownership. Then there's organizational culture, which is all around establishing a really supportive, positive culture for people to be part of as volunteers and um, to create that atmosphere of trust between volunteers, employees, and respect, mutual respect, um, and, and being able to motivate volunteers. So the, very closely related to me, these first three really all point towards leadership, kind of fall within a leadership domain. Um, next is personal skills. Um, so this is some of the things that's a little more difficult sometimes to teach people. This is some of the things that um, we tend to look for in hiring people for extension. And definitely some of these personal skills go beyond just whether you work with Master Gardener volunteers, but just working with people in general. Um, but, but there are aspects of it which are, are things that um, you can build and, and you can teach, things like problem solving and um, communication skills is a big part of it. Um, and just dealing with change. And then the last one is management skills. So this is that more traditional area where a lot of volunteer administration um, professional development focuses on the things like recruiting volunteers, screening them, training them, recognizing them, evaluating their performance. Um, there were nine different competencies in management skills and um, it is definitely extremely important. And, and being able to perform these tasks really helps build a program um, and set up a system that is um, effective and efficient for volunteers to participate in and supports all the other categories. So I think one thing, when you really start looking at these categories, they're very interrelated and support each other. So it's not just a matter of saying, just focus on this one. Um, as you focus and build your skills in one area, it um, contributes to and, and helps all of the, the five different categories. So Boyd was looking at extension um, as a whole, and he was looking at volunteer management as a whole. And so the question is, do these line up with what we need to lead extension master gardener volunteers? And that question has been looked at by Landry Lockett, who is also at Texas A&M. And in his dissertation study, he did a very similar um, Delphi study, and he recruited 15 expert master, uh, master Gardener volunteer coordinators in Texas, so agents that lead the Master Gardener program. And he asked them, what are the competencies needed to be an effective and efficient Master Gardener coordinator? And he actually came up with 64, so he's almost doubled the 33 that Boyd had. Um, but he looked at them and, and um, divided them among Boyd's categories, that same um, organizational leadership, systems leadership, organizational culture and personal skills and management skills. And they aligned very well. So it really complemented and um, validated the system that Boyd had come up with or the framework Boyd had um, for Extension Master Gardener volunteer leadership. And the five, I think it's really interesting to look at the full list of competencies, um, which you can um, find, you can, you can find his dissertation online, you can also find the um, article he published later in the International Journal of Volunteer Administration, um, and, and read the full list, but the top five, um, you know, I think really say a lot about what you need to be able to do or have these attributes and characteristics um, as a person um, and starting off with uh, being able to articulate extensions, missions, and goals. So that's something, you know, we can, you can learn and improve on your ability to do that and, um, and work on that and it's really critical. Um, but some of the other things in the top five, things like showing respect and just, um, you know, feeling like your Master Gardener volunteers are your peers and respecting and valuing them, valuing their time and contributions, having a positive attitude, just enjoying working with people, and then following through on what you say you will do. You know, those are things that are kind of, uh, that are part of your core personality as a person. And you can increase your commitment to these things and you can improve on it. But, you know, if somebody just doesn't enjoy working with people, you can't necessarily send them to a six week class and they come out and they're suddenly um, a real people person. So I thought it was really interesting that most of the things in the top five were not these management skills that can, can be taught. Um, and I also thought it was actually really encouraging to see that neither um, horticultural knowledge, so like being a horticultural expert 
or having experience in volunteer coordination came through as something that you had to have. These weren't core competencies. So you can be hired in as a, as, you know, a new agent, a new volunteer coordinator, um, and still working on your horticultural knowledge and building your volunteer coordination skills. If you have some of these other, these other attributes in place, you will be successful. So what we looked at in North Carolina is taking this framework um, that Boyd and Lockett had built and assessing the training needs for our coordinators. And um, we use the Boric needs assessment model, which I'll show you in just a minute. But to do that, you need to ask some questions. You need to have a, a list of competencies. And then we asked our coordinators for this list of competencies to first rate each one on how important it is, how important do you feel it is to lead a successful program, and then to rate their proficiency level. So how well do they feel at the current time they could um, perform that competency? And there, of course, is a formula. And um, this formula uh, calculates uh, mean weighted discrepancy scores. Um, and you can set up Excel spreadsheets to do that, or most of the, uh, or all of the, I suspect, um, all of the statistical packages that are available, like SPSS, will do this for you. Um, so you don't have to do a lot of math yourself. Um, but what you do really need to do is have that data, that information about, um, for your, your, who you're trying to gauge training needs for, um, what are the skills you're looking at, and how important does that group of people think it is, and then where do they think they stand with these competencies. And this is something you could use with your Master Gardener volunteers, you know, if you're trying to assess their training needs, um, as well as your, your fellow agents. And so the, the survey ends up looking a little bit like this, that you have two sides, and, um, you, have the, you can have the competencies down the middle, or you can have them to one side, and then they just answer two separate questions side by side. Um, but you do need to have those two scales where you're asking them first to indicate how important they think it is, and then what their current uh, proficiency is. All right, so we're gonna take a look at um, the data that came back for North Carolina as far as competency importance. And, uh, you know, so when you're talking about uh, coordinating volunteers, it's often compared to herding cats. So I thought this was a great picture that depicted that. And first, though, I want to ask you guys about for your gut reaction. So when you look at these five bit, these five areas, what do you think is most important? We're going to launch a poll that'll let you let you vote. So that should be up on the screen now. And you can choose which you feel just based on what you think. Do you think it's that organ organizational leadership um, or systems leadership, which would be B, organizational culture, C, personal skills, D, or management skills, E? Okay, we got answers coming in. So all you have to do is the letter that you think uh, is most important, just push that letter on your keyboard. If you're joining from a phone, I'm not sure if you can participate in the polls, actually. All right, we'll give it five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. All right, you should see the results. And um, our folks that are here today are, are voting for personal skills as the most important aspect, um, followed by organizational culture and then the management skills, systems leadership, and organizational leadership last. So let's see how this lined up with our agents in North Carolina. And I think it's just about exactly the same, almost, it was really close. So personal skills absolutely came out first, just like um, you know everybody here today. Those are just things that are very critical for having good relationships with other people and being successful in your role leading volunteers. Um, for us in North Carolina, systems leadership was next, then organizational culture, then management skills. And just like with you guys, uh, that our vote, our poll we just had, organizational leadership came up as last. Um, but I think one thing is, is interesting if you look at the, the mean scores for um, these five competency areas, they're really close. So it was only a range of 0.16. So 4.44 was the highest and 4.28 was the lowest. Um, so there's not huge differences here. They're all really important. It's not that people felt some weren't and some were. 
um, but if you were just to, to rank them, you do get that, that order of ranking. Every now and okay, there we go. <laughs> Every now and again, the thing that lets you advance the slides is a little slow coming up. Um, so we'll start out. I just wanted to go through each one of these and point out some of the competencies that rated highest um, here in North Carolina. And just starting off with personal skills, um, which if you look at other, um, there's been a couple other studies to use a similar framework. Personal skills also came out highest um, with 4-H agents. They felt the same, and um, and and Dr. Lockett in his dissertation, you know, even said that the enjoyment of working alongside people and partnering with people is fundamental to having a successful master gardener program. So you really do need to be a people person. And a lot of these things are personal characteristics, such as um, patience and flexibility, and again, just just enjoying working with people. So those are those things that you need to have coming into the job. It's not something you. Can, you could work on individually, but it would be hard to teach somebody um, some of these things. So these are some characteristics in hiring extension agents, usually typically for any position that um, need to be looked for and, and sought after. But some of the things, the specific competencies, um, okay, is the poll still up? I thought I had taken that down. I saw it, there was a note about the poll still being in the way. Okay, I think, I think it's been taken care of. All right, so some of the personal skills that rated highest in North Carolina and um, include being able to cultivate successful working relationships with Master Gardener volunteers. Um, and while there are some definitely some skills involved with this, um, some of it does go back to those personal characteristics like having a positive attitude and following through on what you say you will do you know, is really important in building those working relationships and having that trust between you and your Master Gardener volunteers. That was the, the most important of the personal skills. Um, the others effectively resolve conflict. So that's definitely something we see a lot in extension, people seeking those um, to build competency in that area. And, and there's often training opportunities available. So there's things you can learn, there's methods you can learn, and you can practice, practice being the most important part to get better at it, um, to build your skills in resolving conflict. Um, and then three and four are all about communication. So actively listening when volunteers have a problem, um, you know, shows one, you're listening and you hear what the problem is and you can take steps to address it, but it also shares that um, respect for your volunteers. and um, you know, this is something that you can learn more about, active listening and the process of active listening, um, and you can practice that. And then verbal communications as well, being able to um, clearly communicate um, your ideas with others is really important. Um, and those are things that you can learn more about and um, practice and build those skill areas. All right, okay, I got the next one come up. So following uh, personal skills with systems leadership. And again, systems leadership is all about sharing um, ownership in the program. And this one is, is challenging because um, it's a moving target, you know, depending on who you're working with and um, what team you're working with, the balance could be a little bit different. Um, but the things within systems leadership, uh, the competencies that ranked highest um, were the ability to enlist the assistance of Master Gardener volunteers. So, you know, getting your Master Gardener volunteers to, to get on board and to actually sign up for those volunteer opportunities um, and commit um, to the volunteer work that needs to be done. And some of the other things th that are within both systems leadership and some of the other competencies help contribute to that. So a big part of um, getting people to, um, to volunteer is understanding what motivates them. What were their expectations? What did they come to the organization um, seeking? And helping them to fulfill those motivations. And we've certainly had a lot of studies um, on what motivates Master Gardener volunteers to join the program. And it really comes down to they want to learn more about horticulture and then they want to help their community. They want to give back. 
and um, Cherry Dorn from Georgia gave a great presentation um, as part of last year's uh, coordinators discussion. You can find the recording on the YouTube page where she's, she has recently wrapped up a national study of Master Gardener volunteer motivations. Um, so you can certainly learn more about what's motivating our volunteers. Um, you know, you can talk to your own volunteers and then frame those volunteer opportunities in, in ways that appeal to their motivations and help fulfill their motivations. Um, in some organizations, they actively match volunteers. So they'll, you know, have the volunteer come in and talk about what do you want to do? And what are your interests? And then they'll, the, the coordinator will, will tell them, this is what we're going to assign you. But in the Master Gardener Volunteer Program, we typically allow our Master Gardener volunteers to choose their own opportunities. So one thing that really helps with that is providing clear position descriptions that spell out exactly, you know, what skills you need, what you're going to be doing, the time commitment, um, and also what the goal is, you know, letting them know, helping them connect with the purpose, you know, so it's not just coming to pull weeds in the garden. Um, we're pulling weeds in the garden because the garden is an important part of our outreach and demonstrating best practices and things like that. It's so helping people understand the opportunities that are there and the skills that are needed and how it supports the whole program. And then of course training, you know, a big part of somebody being willing to take on a certain position is feel if they feel they can do it. Um, so providing the training that prepares them and that often goes beyond just horticulture. Um, also providing training in um, teaching methods and um, presentation methods and the other skills that are needed to share the horticulture information as well. So um, the next competency that rated second highest for systems leadership was being able to delegate responsibility to volunteers. And um, I was reading some other um, papers and studies uh, in the Journal of Extension that looked at this. And um, the recommendation is it, when you're going to delegate responsibility is to choose a task that you like to do and delegate that to your volunteers. Because if you enjoy doing it, you're typically much more familiar with it and you know what is required to complete the task. So it's easier for you to delegate it. It's easier for you to, to um, give people the information they need to perform the task. I never actually thought about it that way. And I thought that was, that was made a lot of sense and was very interesting. And then three um, was really around sharing ownership and it's that balance again about giving your individual volunteers or giving your volunteers who are working together in teams freedom to plan and implement projects yet to stay involved enough to provide guidance and and this is you know what I mentioned before is a, a moving target and something that requires constant uh, management and constant you're you're going back you're communicating back and forth and exactly where that balance is might be different depending on the volunteers you're working with or the teams you're working with. So this is, I think, a really, really critical one, but also one that takes more work and it's, it's an ongoing thing. So that was the, the top scoring competencies in the systems leadership. And of course, all of the competencies that were tested, you can see in the um, self-assessment tool that, that Nicole sent out with the email this morning. Um, but this brings us to organizational leadership. I mean, I'm sorry, organizational culture. So this is all about establishing the environment. The environment, what is the culture of your Master Gardener program? You, know, you can talk about the culture of your office or as extension as an organization. But you want a culture that is positive and supportive. You want people to feel like they're in a safe place that supports learning. You know, that if they, met, if they make a mistake, it's okay. You know, people are going to be okay with it and they're going to support them. So that's really critical to have that type of environment um, to support a successful volunteer program. And that's absolutely what came out as number one, is that ability to create a positive environment. Um, you know, and some things that help contribute to that that we might not necessarily think about is um, it's not just you and, and the model that you're presenting. That's a huge part of the organizational culture, but it's all the other people in your office, too. So helping the other people in the office understand and value volunteers and understand why they're coming to the office and the work they're doing and why it's important. Um, and then taking the time necessary to meet with your volunteers helps create that positive environment, as well as just respecting your volunteers as peers. Um, you know, 
they are bringing a lot of experience and a lot of uh, knowledge to, and respecting that and acknowledging that is really important. And that really follows up on number two um, was to be able to demonstrate respect for your volunteers' time and contributions. And, and it really needs to be genuine, you know, when you tell people thank you, when you show, um, acknowledge their contributions, you know, that it's coming from a genuine place that you really appreciate it. And then trusting volunteers to complete tasks given to them. And that one can be, uh, you know, a little bit more of a tough one that you might have to work on yourself. And, and part of that trusting the volunteers to complete tasks is um, realizing that um, they might not do things exactly like you did, but as long as they're coming up with the end product, the end result that's needed, and it's, it's research-based and, you know, non-biased, it's in line with what um, the extension mission, then that's okay. You know, so being a little more flexible personally um, to allow people to do things in ways you wouldn't necessarily have done it. Um, and giving them the information up front they need to get to the right place and then trusting them to complete it. All right, so um, actually I, I put organizational leadership next in the slides, even though it ranked lowest for importance. Um, but I just wanted to end up on management skills. But within organizational leadership, this goes back to the mission, you know, and you're being personally committed to the mission and communicating it constantly to your volunteers and making sure the mission of extension drives everything you do with your, um, your volunteer program. And that definitely came out very strongly um, in the top ranking um, competencies among North Carolina, because also in organizational leadership is planning and needs assessment. But uh, none of the competencies related to planning um, and needs assessment showed up in these top um, uh, ranked competencies. So number one um, was communicate extensions mission and goals to volunteers and that was actually in the top five of all competencies for being most important and, and very strongly agrees with um, Dr. Lockett's study and where that came out as being the most important thing you need to be able to do. Um, using the mission and the goals of extension to plan your program you know, it helps show a personal commitment to it and make sure your program is aligned to the organization. Um, explaining the volunteer opportunities that are available in the context of the extension mission so volunteers um, understand, you know, what their role is and that they are part of extension and, and what extension's mission is and how they're supporting that. And then um, communicating the efforts and accomplishments of your volunteers in the context of extension's mission. So showing how what you've been doing and, and the outcomes support um, extension's goals and mission. So everything resolve, revolves around the mission. And then management skills. And again, management skills. Um, uh, are really, really critical, even though they didn't come out maybe as the most important, they support everything else in here. Having this, um, be, you know, really understanding the processes and the tasks around volunteer administration um, helps build an effective and efficient program that then allows you to have a good organizational culture and good systems leadership. And so it's, it's a critical part. And I was just checking some questions in the chat and I saw that, um, the question has come in that organizational leadership ranked last in North Carolina and in your opinion and based on your research do you agree that this competency should rank last? I think when we are focusing on volunteer management I would agree with it and and also I would want to emphasize that again even though it ranked last there was only 0.16 you know sixteenths of a point difference between number one and number five and so there's very little difference. I ranked them by the actual numbers, but they were really close. Um, so it's not like that one really came much, much lower. Um, in a similar study, a nationwide study that um, used the same framework for 4-H agents, they also ranked leadership skills, um, organizational leadership among the lowest. Um, and I think it's just, it's really critical in extension it's kind of part of the bigger being an extension agent, an extension age educator, um, and being committed to the mission 
Um, but when you're looking at it in your specific role as a volunteer administrator, is it as important or is it, you know, where, how does it rank with these others? So I kind of agree with where it came out, but um, I think the real closeness of the, the rankings show that it's not that it's not important, it's just was slightly less than the others. All right, so with management skills, this is those um, like the ISATOR model, the GEMS model, the recruiting, training, you know, the traditional things we think about. With, um, with coordinating volunteers, and there were actually 15 different competencies in this one, whereas all the other had 10. Um, and the ones that came out as ranking most important in North Carolina were being able to train our Master Gardener volunteers. Um, which, you know, makes a tremendous amount of sense because as Master Gardener volunteers, you know, they need a tremendous amount of knowledge to go out um, and perform the roles that we want them to advise the public and to share information, to problem solve, answer questions, things like that. So being able to train them and give them the knowledge and skills they need is, is really critical. The next one um, surprised me a little bit. Um, and I had to remind myself that just because it's important doesn't mean there's a widespread problem. <laughs> but the second one was uh, to be to disengage volunteers who exhibit, exhibit problematic behaviors, which of course is extremely important. If you do have a volunteer um, that is an issue in your program and it's disrupting other volunteers, it's disrupting the organizational culture, and you know, and they're not fitting in with like the balance of the program, it is really important to be able to address that and either redirect the person um, or, it, you know, as a last measure, measure disengage them. And um, with disengaging volunteers, usually somebody who reaches that point isn't happy. And maybe it's that they really weren't the right person for the Master Gardener program to start with. They didn't understand what they were getting involved with. They signed up for a role they didn't understand or realize. You know, there can be a lot of things that can be prevented um, before you reach that stage. And all of the other areas of management skills help make sure that somebody who joins the program and is accepted into the program gets into a place where they can be successful and helps prevent this um, need to ever disengage. Although, you know, it is really important when you have somebody who's disrupting the program to be able to address it. Um, number three is one of these really important things to, to help make sure you've got people who understand that they're father in the program and what the program's all about, and that's providing a comprehensive orientation to the Extension Master Gardener program, which would include understanding the mission and the policies um, and, and doing that, of course, early on when everybody joins the program and um, recruiting them. So, you know, I would, even before you get to organ, uh, orientation, you need to have recruited people with that information up front to make sure the folks that are coming into the program, again, understand the expectations. This is where they want to be. This is, um, these are things that they want to be part of. And then uh, number five among management skills was retaining volunteers. And retaining volunteers um, actually talked about this last year in one of our coordinator discussion, so you can go back and, and find a recording about that that goes into more detail. But with retaining volunteers, things um, that satisfy their motivations become really important. So again, with our Master Gardeners, we know they're really motivated to learn. So providing those learning opportunities helps with retention, um, providing them with volunteer opportunities that connect them with the needs of the community because they're there to help support um, and give back to the community. Um, acknowledging and recognizing their efforts um, can also be an important thing to help with retention. So those were management skills, um, which again, support everything else. You know, having this core system down is really important for um, managing an effective program. So we're not going to go into depth on the proficiencies, but this was one of the questions that was asked and you compare the importance to the proficiencies and see if what gap exists to uh, determine the training need. So that's what the BORCH needs model does. Um, but proficiency is, was ab, um, all about where each person perceived their current level to be. And I will just show kind of the overall scores. And one thing that 
might jump out to you as things that um, people felt like they were more proficient in were also tended to be the things they felt were more important. So number one was personal skills, you know, across the board and everything else was just kind of within one position of the other. Um, and this really makes a lot of sense. And if you look at studies that use the same framework, um, people do, if they think something's important, they're typically going to build those skills and vice versa. If somebody's good at something, they're going to think it's important. So a lot of times you will see a, a strong um, alignment between where people's proficiencies rank with what they feel is important. And that's actually where the um, using the mean weighted discrepancy scores can help tease out maybe a little bit more um, fine detail on some of these things compared to just looking at how people rate their own proficiencies. Um, and that's where training needs comes in. So taking the information, um, calculating the mean weighted discrepancy scores to come up with these training need scores um, will show you where the true needs exist. And before I share just quickly what came out on top in North Carolina, I did want to let everybody know that, um, of course, the findings we're talking about today was limited to North Carolina because that was our study population. Um, but the Extension Master Gardener National Committee will be launching this study um, on a national level. So we want to assist um, across the country where our Master Gardener coordinators are, what their training needs are, um, and we will be sending out an invitation later this fall, early winter, so December, January timeframe. It'll come from your state coordinator and it'll invite you to participate in a very similar survey um, to help us assess these training needs for everybody across the country. And that will help the National Committee um, set priorities for providing resources um, and developing resources to support all of us in developing these competencies. So please be on the lookout for that. And when you get the email, um, it will take you 20, 20, 25 minutes to complete the survey because there's you know, quite a few areas, but um, it is very important you know, for us to have robust data to base these decisions on. So the more people participate, the better um, the findings will be in reflecting the actual needs and the more we are, will be able to determine what resources to provide to meet your needs. So I think I had this as a poll, but I think just because of time, we won't, we, I won't ask it, but um, I was going to ask you guys to, to uh, share what you think was the highest rated training need. So you can just put that in your mind. What do you think it is? And drum roll, <laughs> we find out that actually management skills, even though our agents thought management skills weren't that important, they also felt they weren't that proficient in it. And so um, it came out as the top ranking need. Um, with the highest need score. And you see there is uh, quite a bit larger range in these need scores um, with management skills being 5.5, whereas something like organizational culture, which I just, and I personally feel the culture within extension is already there, you know, and that um, people who are hired into extension or even attracted to extension positions have that, um, they're part of that culture. So we don't maybe necessarily need to work as hard to build the organizational culture competencies as, as some of the things like management skills, which we maybe didn't come into extension having. Um, so management skills and followed by systems leadership. And again, systems leadership is that balancing the power and ownership, um, which is so critical, but also I think, you know, just a challenging thing that is always changing and that, that's part of what makes it challenging. So those by far came out, you know, much higher than um, organizational leadership, personal skills, and then the, the organizational culture. I think again with personal skills, many of the, uh, if we are attracted to extension careers, we tend to be people who enjoy working with other people and want to help other people and have some of those skills already. So just quickly, I wanted to show how the top 10 fell out and you can see everything in red is a management skill and the absolute number one, that came out with a score of 8.43, much higher than the next you know, score was 6.26, was that ability to disengage volunteers. And again, it's a reflection that our agents in North Carolina felt like this is really important to do, but they didn't feel like they were good at it or very proficient at it. And it's a, it's a difficult thing to do. So it's, at first I was a little bit dismayed and thought, oh my gosh, does this mean we have a real problem in North Carolina? But I don't think so. I think it is just that reflection that it's very important 
to do, but it's really difficult to do. And people typically don't get the opportunity to practice this skill, um, so you don't build it. So it's a good thing you're not practicing it a lot because we, we don't want to reach this stage with our volunteers. We want to practice other management skills that um, prevent ever needing to get there. Um, but that came out as number one, following by, followed by um, being able to inspire leadership. So really getting people to step up from just helping, you know, pull weeds to taking that leadership role. So being a garden curator to help um, guide other volunteers. And that's so important for increasing the capacity of the program itself, the ability to do more. Um, three was redirect master gardener volunteers. And again, that's, that's kind of really follows with that disengagement. That's kind of some of the conflict management and personal skills and just being able to approach people when things aren't going well and, you know, share that with them and help them realize it and help them find a, a better place to be. Um, you know, then we're, we're talking about things like retaining master gardener volunteers, recruiting volunteers, um, orientation, training, um, providing those position descriptions that help volunteers choose the positions that they're going to be successful in, all of those management skills. And then we've got some more of the systems leadership stuff coming back in. So how to enlist the assistance of your volunteers and how to empower volunteers to serve as leaders again. So, so developing leadership came out pretty strong in these top 10 as well. So these are some of the areas we'll be prioritizing in North Carolina to develop resources and um, to, to provide training. And we want to, of course, find out uh, across the country, you know, whether these are the type of needs we have or if they're different. And that's where the, the survey will help. But I think overall, just recommendations and take homes from what does it take to lead a, a Master Gardener volunteer program is it takes a lot. <laughs> it takes a lot of um, competencies in different areas than maybe just what it takes to be a horticultural educator. Um, so you've got all the, the leadership areas, whether it's systems leadership, organizational leadership, organizational culture, you have the personal skills that contribute to, to everything, you know, success in, in all of these areas. And then those management skills, which are really the core processes of the program. Um, and again, where a lot of the courses and the professional development opportunities that are available focus on those management skills. So the first step for any of us individually is uh, to increase our practice, our volunteer engagement practice, um, uh, effectiveness is to understand our incompetencies and be really honest with ourselves about where we stand. And so the, um, the self-assessment that went out is a tool you can use. It just asks you to rate yourself for each of the, the competency areas. Um, and then just kind of seeing where you were stronger and where you were weaker and seeking opportunities to build, um, build strength in areas that, um, that are needed. And there's a lot of opportunities out there. Um, the uh, course, the six-week course that's offered to the University of Wisconsin-Madison, the Achieving Extension Mission Through Volunteers, uh, an announcement about that went out on the e-blast, I think, earlier this week. Um, that's coming up in January. That uses the ISATOR model, the, one of the, the earlier models, which is still a wonderful model, <laughs> you know, for volunteer management. And um, that is a wonderful opportunity. It's not a, a full semester long course. It's six weeks. It's very, um, you're very um, interactive and you get to interact with people of very, of different skill levels. So strongly recommended. Um, I believe the fee is $100, but um, you have the slides and that link is live. So it'll take you to where you can learn more about it as well as register. Then, of course, Nicole mentioned earlier on the um, 2020 National EMG Coordinators Conference, um, which will be out in Knoxville, Tennessee in September of next year. And um, right now, the registration is probably going to open around March. So um, thinking about that for your budget and um, planning to attend that. And then call for proposals will come out in maybe February or March timeframe. So if there are things that you can present and share, um, we, we certainly want to, to have your proposals. The EMG coordinator resources page um, or, or website has a lot of resources that will help you, particularly in some of the management areas. Um, these are things that have been shared by your peers and vetted and reviewed. 
um, to make sure they're good resources for all Extension Master Gardener coordinators. Um, so I really encourage you to check out the site. Also the recordings, you know, the recordings of these webinars that are every month. Many of those address some of these core competencies areas. Um, with the coordinator resources website, you not only have the opportunity to look at what's there, um, you can join the resource team, you can become a peer reviewer, you can nominate a resource. So I really encourage you to, to think about um, participating in one of those three ways as well. And then next month, um, the next month's coordinators discussion, November 20th, um, Natalie Baumgartner will be leading the discussion and talking about um, the Extension Master Gardener National Committee strategic plan, um, as well as some of the specific things we're working on for professional development. Um, and I thought this would be a great opportunity if you guys out there have other, um, have other, I was just checking something in the chat, I will share in just a minute, but if you have other resources you found that would be very helpful, um, maybe some websites or organizations that provide great resources on volunteer administration and building your competencies, just please add that to the chat right now or, or unmute your mic and share it. Um, and I did see there was a couple of corrections to when I was talking about the course on um, achieving the extension mission through volunteers, the cost is $250 and that technically it is the North Central Region AME TV. And I'm not sure what all those letters stand for, but it is on a Wisconsin website. So that's why I had credited Wisconsin. Okay, I see there's a discount code that lowers it to $100. So that's why uh, I had seen $100. All right, does anybody have any other thing they found that's really um, helpful? You know, I would always say as well, there's lots of great articles that are published in the Journal of Extension, which is online and available. Um, the um, International Journal of Volunteer Administration is also available online. You can find lots of great resources there. Um, Alive, and I can't remember what all the letters stand for, but it is another organization that it used to be the AVA, the um, Association of Volunteer Administrators. It's now Alive, um, and they are a great resource. Let's see. I'm seeing there's some questions coming in the chat about where do we find the discount code and to whom is it available. That's referring back to the, the course. Um, it says use the code NCRBS when you check out to register at the reduced rate. Okay, so the discount code is NCRBS um, when you are signing up and registering and checking out to get that $100 discounted rate. And of course that um, also something to think forward on your calendar every other year is the National Extension Conference on Volunteerism, NECV. And that was this past year. So the next one will be in 2021. So every year you'll have uh, opportunities to attend national conferences that really focus on skills and competencies as a coordinator, whether it's the EMG coordinators conference like next year in Tennessee or the National Extension Conference on Volunteerism. All right, and just to wrap up, um, I did list the references, so if you want to look up the articles that are, were mentioned and referenced, um, you have the information to do that. Also, they are live linked on the um, self-assessment. So if you go back to Nicole's email from this morning and open the self-assessment tool, the first page is just kind of an introduction and it gives you links directly to the articles. You don't have to look them up. Um, and the self-assessment tool itself is, um, a pilot test, so kind of just, just getting it out there. So I do welcome um, any comments or suggestions you have uh, on improving it or just questions you have about it. So feel free to contact me. And with that, I will turn it back over to you, Nicole. Thank you, Charlotte. Great information. A couple of things I saw in the chat box, someone asked about the Self-assessment, so we sent that out in the announcement for the webinar. I will send it out with the archive link to the recording. Um, so we'll make sure everybody gets that. Um, you would get it if you are on the EMG listserv. So if you don't know if you're on the listserv, send me an email and I can uh, give you instructions on how to go about doing that. 
Um, let's see. I'll also. Uh, now um, the, Oh, I'll, I'll also, I have uploaded a Google Drive, so I'll up do, upload, I'll add that link to the chat. So anybody should be able to click on it and open it. Okay. All right. And Natalie, are you on the call still? Oh. I was wondering if you wanted to talk about next yes, month's webinar. Yes, and actually Charlotte did a, a great job. I just wanted to chime in and say, we're going to be given an update, but on the national uh, strategic plan, but we're also really at a great stage to ask for input. So we wanna share some of the thinking that we've been doing, but absolutely get your opinion on for professional development toolkits, on even things that have to do with logos and websites and, and um, communication ideas and ways that we can best support you. So it's definitely gonna be an opportunity for feedback and we'd love for you to join in and share some of your thoughts with us. Thanks, Natalie. So you can see in the chat box, uh, Charlotte posted the self-assessment tool link. Um, you can go ahead and um, give yourself a self-assessment based on these different categories and competencies and find out maybe where you or your organization needs to work on things a little bit. I think for me, I did this earlier today, and I think um, the one that's coming up is organizational culture, mostly other folks in the office understanding the value of volunteers and why it's important to treat them with respect help somebody when there's a jam in the copier, things like that. So it's not necessarily within our Master Gardener Volunteer Program, but it's a re-education office-wide of the importance of volunteers. So that's something that I'm going to be working on. Did anybody um, get a chance to do the self-assessment or have any comments on the competencies that Charlotte mentioned? If you do, please unmute your phone or type them in the chat box. I'll, I'll say, Nicole, when I first started, um, kind of in those years, I was trying to figure out what it took to lead volunteers. Um, I always thought it was horticultural knowledge. I thought, oh, you have to know a lot about <laughs> horticulture because you have to answer all their questions, right? Or, or, you know, be able to help them with that aspect of it. And, um, and you know, when I first read these studies or even just first learned about volunteer administration as a, uh, a field, I realized how wrong I was, you know, and that's not actually what's most important in working with volunteers. So if you, can I jump in? This is Mike from Wisconsin. Um, one, I, sure. I think there's a point of clarity regarding the Achieving Extension mission I want to float out there. I think that code discount is for those of us in the North Central region, since that program was subsidized for creation by those states. If you're outside the North Central region, I think it's 250. So I just want to put that out there to check with your volunteer specialist before signing up to make sure you pay the right price. Um, the other thing okay. that I wanted to ask Char Charlotte regarding what you just said, um, which I intuitively agree with you about, man, you know, this is this job's more than about horticulture. It's about all these other skills. But when these surveys were done and everybody was asked, was everybody being asked already having that background in plant sciences where that was a non-issue? And thus, that's why the other things crept up as important? Or is there a way to maybe screen out that bias to say um, it really is not important. You know, it, how is that taken uh, in fact into account? Well, here in North Carolina, and this is where the national study will be really useful, but here in North Carolina, all of our, our folks that are local coordinators that took the um, survey are agents, so horticultural educators. So they, uh, they do have that horticultural background. Um, so, I know in other states, there are people, you know, who serve as a volunteer coordinator, and that's a separate position to being the horticulture educator, mm -hmm. but here in North Carolina, that's almost always a combined yeah. Uh, position. So, yeah, so it's, so just from our North Carolina study, we can't, you know, say that's definitely, but in our, our upcoming national study, we'll, we'll get a little more insight on that. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank you for clarifying about that code. So um, that's, you know, I, we, we started sending the emails around so I can totally see why that starts getting spread around. But mm. I'm, you know, I'm like, oh, just check with folks. Be, be safe. So this is Jennifer at WSU Washington State University. I'm the uh, recently hired statewide program leader. And I'm actually a prime example of not having the mm -hmm. technical competencies in horticulture. So I have a minor in environmental science, but my um, undergraduate and graduate work is in management and leadership. Mm -hmm. So 
for me, I'm kind of the opposite of where you all are at. And so we have a, we surveyed the state program coordinators in Washington State and other um, faculty and, and agents in the counties to find out what they thought would be best for leading the Master Gardener program into the future. And the thing that um, popped up over and over again was somebody with expertise in management and leadership. Mm. So we went a different direction with our with program leadership. So it's only been since May. So what is this? Uh, mid of October. Um, so we'll we'll continue to evaluate that, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I'd I'd love to see more. You know about. Um, what you, you know, how you assess that and, and what came out of it. But um, I think one of the important things is if you don't have the horticultural knowledge to provide the training for your volunteers that they need is, do you have the ability to make those connections and find those resources and bring in the people? Who exactly. Can so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's others too. Yeah. I'm seeing that pop up in the chat. Yeah. Um, out in Colorado, uh, so same same boat here in Colorado, and then also somebody that was hired with a strong volunteer management experience and limited horticultural experience, and seems to be working out well in New Hampshire. Great, thanks. Thank you. And I really appreciate the opportunity to join you guys today and talk about this. Um, as Nicole said, it was my dissertation study and I have just literally finished it. <laughs> and um, I do anticipate uh, publishing some articles that'll be in Journal of Extension and, and some of the other publications. So you'll be seeing more about this in the next year. Well, thank you so much, Charlotte, and congratulations on your dissertation and finishing up. That's fantastic. Um, if anyone has any questions on this, you can contact Charlotte. She's happy to help or answer uh, any additional questions. Don't forget to complete your self-assessment and find out if there's maybe a competency that you need to work on. And then if you have ideas for future webinars or competencies that we need to focus on, you can let me, any member of the National Committee know. And don't forget that the survey will be coming out um, where you can go ahead and complete that. And then we'll use that information for professional development next year. So I really appreciate everyone being on the call. We'll see you back in November uh, with an update from the Extension Master Gardener National Committee. And I hope you all have a really great rest of your week. Thanks again, Charlotte. Thank you, Nicole. Thanks so much. You're welcome. All right, see everybody all right. Take next care. week. Yep, next month. I'm sorry, see everybody next month. Yeah, next month. <laughs> It'll be here like it's next week. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> All right. Thank you again. Have a great week, everyone.